as one of the first bands signed to the Beatles' Apple Records label, Badfinger was destined for greatness. But after selling 14 million albums worldwide and scoring three top 10 hits between 1970 and 1972, including Come and Get It, written by Paul McCartney, No Matter What and Without You, the British Quartet was sidelined by mismanagement and tragedy. Two of its members, guitarist Tom Evans and singer Pete Ham, took their own lives and drummer Mike Gibbons died of a brain aneurysm in 2005. Formed as the Ivies in Swansea, it consisted of lead guitarists Pete Ham, bass guitarist Ronald Griffiths, rhythm guitarist David Jenkins and drummer Roy Anderson. The band went through a few more changes over the years before they changed their name to Badfinger and had replaced Jenkins, Anderson and Griffiths with guitarist Tom Evans, drummer Mike Gibbons and guitarist Joey Molland, who, along with Pete Ham, now consisted of the original lineup of Badfinger. They were the first band to sign with the Beatles record label Apple Records in 1968. It all looked so bright for the group. The band saw a string of hits chart in various countries after they signed with Apple and were soon offered the song Come and Get It by Paul McCartney himself, who asked them to record it note by note how he intended it to be. Come and Get It was a big hit when it was released, selling a million copies around the world and charting in the top 10 of both the UK and the US charts. This newfound success led them to release their first full-length studio album as Badfinger, titled Magic Christian Music in January 1970, that peaked at number 55 on the Billboard 200 in the US. They followed this up with their second studio album No Dice later that year, which saw them break into the top 30 on the album charts as they peaked at number 28 on the Billboard 200, which to date still stands as their highest charting album. No Dice consisted of the single Without You, written by Ham and Evans, which went on to be covered by over 180 artists since its release, including Harry Nilsson and Mariah Carey, whose covers reached number one and number three on the US charts respectively. Badfinger's collapse began ever since they signed with American manager Stan Polly. Polly had a good reputation and was also managing Al Cooper and Lou Christie at that time. But despite this, he was a cunning man, contributing in large to the tensions within the band with his dubious practices. He signed the band members to shady contracts, which allowed him to keep the majority of the earnings and leave next to nothing for the band. Joey Moland said, We signed a $3 million record deal with Warner Brothers and they gave us $600,000 and we still didn't have any cash. It all went to our manager. I couldn't even buy a tape recorder. Despite signing with Stan Polly, Badfinger continued to have a good run as they assisted Beatle George Harrison during his studio sessions as well as joining him for his 1971 The Concert for Bangladesh, in which Ham performed live with Harrison. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. They released their next album straight up at the peak of their popularity, which included the single Baby Blue and Day After Day. A financial report at the end of 1971 showed that from December 1970 to October 1971, Stan Polly had earned nearly $76,000 alone compared to the earnings of all four band members, which combined was just around a meager $25,000. Things started going south for the band in the year 1972, when Apple Records started to falter. Badfinger still recorded one last album for Apple before Stan Polly secured them a recording deal with Warner Brothers Records. Even though they recorded two new albums with Warner Brothers titled Badfinger and Wish You Were Here, 
Badfinger's career started staggering at this point as Warner Brothers demanded that Stan Polly reveal the whereabouts of an escrow account where Polly was supposed to deposit $250,000 for safekeeping and the account would be mutually accessible for both parties. However, Polly showed no interest in revealing the location of that account even after repeated demands from Warner Brothers. As a result, Badfinger's contract was terminated in April 1974 and a lawsuit was filed later. A patch of legal disputes caused due to the fraudulent practices of Stan Polly left Badfinger financially crippled. Even though Stan Polly managed to conjure up new contracts for the band, he didn't stop his dirty tricks and forced the band to give up their US tour and record another album. Once the album was done recording and the tapes were sent to Warner Brothers executives, the Warner Brothers executives refused to accept those tapes due to the legal entanglement that they were in and felt that this album was just an elaborate attempt to get more money from the label. As a result of all of this, Warner Brothers ceased distribution of their recently released second album Wish You Were Here and stopped all promotional packages for it, which put a stop to Badfinger's career completely. They were doomed since the moment they signed the contract with Stan Polly. As Badfinger further spiralled into turmoil, a polar opposite to their rise to stardom just a few years ago, tension started growing within the band. They didn't receive their salary checks for March and April 1975 and Stan Polly disappeared. The band tried to find new managers to resume their career, but no one would sign them because they still had a contract with Polly, who would not receive any of their calls. Unable to take any more of the financial issues, Pete Ham, aged just 27, hanged himself on the morning of the 24th of April 1975 in his garage with a note addressed to his girlfriend who was pregnant with his child. He wrote in his note, I will not be allowed to love and trust everybody. This is better. He also mentioned Stan Polly, calling him a soulless bastard. A month later, Warner Brothers terminated their contract with Badfinger again and the band officially broke up. Stan Polly was finally forced to pay an undisclosed amount of money to Warner Brothers in 1978, but he still walked away with nearly $100,000 from all of this. Even though Badfinger briefly reunited post Ham's death, they never really reached the levels they did at the start of the decade. In the early 1980s, both Molland and Evans were leading two separate bands, both named Badfinger, which caused a strain in their relationship. The legacy of Badfinger that remains today was tarnished with yet another death in 1983. Joey Moland and Tom Evans got into a heated argument on the evening of the 18th of November 1983, the subject of which was regarding royalties from their track Without You, which Evans was now receiving. The morning after the argument, Evans, aged 36, hanged himself in his garden. As of 2020, Joey Moland is the only surviving band member from the Badfinger lineup. Mike Gibbons passed away in his sleep at the age of 56 due to a brain aneurysm. Stan Polly lived a long life, dying aged 87 in 2009. Today, Badfinger's contribution to music is largely forgotten. People who finish watching Breaking Bad and have a keen ear for music might be tempted to Google Breaking Bad's ending song, which would lead them to Badfinger's catalogue of music. After the finale of Breaking Bad aired, surviving member and fan of the show Joey Moland tweeted his excitement at his song being used in the episode. Baby Blue was also used briefly during a scene in the 2006 movie The Departed, directed by Martin Scorsese. As a result of it being used in Breaking Bad and the buzz it generated, the song charted in the UK for the first time, nearly 41 years after its release. It peaked at number 73. It is one of the saddest stories in not just rock and roll, but all of music. 
Living up to a tag as huge as the next Beatles, the band had all the tools to make it big. Individually, Pete Ham and Tom Evans were gifted lyricists. Joey Milan said, Pete Ham should have been a millionaire by 1975. He'd written four or five great songs that were international hits. The royalties were in the $200,000 range every couple of months. The checks would go to the manager, and that's the last we'd see of them. Pete Ham died a broken man. Tom Evans never got over his death and died the same way. It is criminal to think that what would have become of Badfinger if they had better management. They had the Beatles on their side, their songs were charting worldwide, and what they wrote went on to be covered into greatness. The industry greed killed two talented artists and a collective that never truly got a chance to shine. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Bad Finger song that you like the most or perhaps a moment in their career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.